All right, let's just do another example. This is important. Let's try to fill in the other cells in this table. So again, let's try working this out on paper using the same techniques that we've been using on the previous problems. So good. Yeah, we have to put in the conversion. Okay, so let's keep working that out. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't write that clearly in the board. So let's see. This should be a minus 15. Oh, okay. Okay, well, let's just keep working through this until we have all the numbers. Go ahead and keep working through that until we get all the numbers. <laughs> yeah, let's stop and see where we are right now. So we have the 15 moles of hydrogen. So here's our starting piece of information. Now it's good that you started with the 15 and not the 40, because the conversion approach only works for the changes, not for the start or the end. Here's our target units. So we might try to figure out this change. We can't figure out this directly, only the change. Here's the conversion ratio. And we have two moles of ammonia for every three moles of hydrogen. So three goes into 15 five times, and we end up with 10. And I think you also notice that this should now be positive 10. If we're using up starting materials, we're making products. All right, well, we still have a bunch of other numbers to figure out, so let's keep working through those.
Good. Let's talk about that a little. Now, I think the most productive way to attack this is, first of all, we want to ask, what's our target units? So what would be our target units here? Right, so I'll start by writing that down. And maybe I'll put a question mark here. Now, in order to do a unit conversion, I have to have a starting number. So what's going to be the starting number I'm going to use to figure this out? Or what's the starting number I could use to figure this out? The 10 moles of NH3. Yeah, or if you wanted, you could use these 15 moles, whichever you like. But let's use the 10 moles. 10 moles of NH3. So this is what I would write down next. So I noticed that when you were working through this, it looked like you, would actually, you were actually starting with the conversion ratio part. But I think actually, uh, I think that's a mistake. Because we don't know who to put on the top and the bottom until we've written these two things first. So first, we should write our target units and our starting information. And only then should we write the conversion ratio. And that's true for any type of unit conversion. The unit convert that you, you, we don't write the conversion ratio until we have the starting information and the target, and you can see why. What units do I need to put on the bottom of this fraction? The target. I mean the uh, the same as what you're starting with the starting material. So in this case, that would be moles of ammonia. That's right. But notice that you would have no idea to put here if you hadn't already written this down. So that's why we can't write the conversion ratio until we've written the starting information. So the starting information comes first. Only then. Do we know what to write down here to cancel those units? And so what unit should I put up here? The um, target. Yeah, but of course you couldn't do that unless you knew what the target was. So again, it doesn't make sense to write the conversion ratio until you've written the target and the starting units. So this would be moles of ammonia. And until you've written these down, you don't know where to put your numbers. So we know this is the number two, but how do I know whether to put the two on the top or the bottom only after I put these units in? Do I see that the two goes with the ammonia down here and the nitrogen gets the number one? So that would be a good order to, to go through these. Target, starting information, then the conversion. Also, I think something that might confuse us here is you might be tempted to try to do this like a proportion. Uh, a proportion is when we have two fractions that are set equal to each other. Well, we're not using that approach. We're not using setting up a proportion. So it looked to me like you might have put an equal sign yeah. in here. All right, that didn't actually mess you up. You got the right answer, but it could have messed you up. So we're not saying that these are equal to each other. We're not setting up a proportion between them. Here's where the equal sign is. We're taking the starting units, we're converting it, and that equals the target units. So here's where the equals goes. All right, and then you got the right answer. Two goes into 10 five times. So we can put in this number of five moles. Did you decide what the sign of that was going to be? Yeah, you did, good. Since one of the starting materials was decreasing, this starting material should also decrease. Well, we still got three more numbers to fill in. So let's make sure we filled in all the remaining numbers in the table. Uh, 25. Uh, yeah, so you put in this number, 25. Now we can figure out this end number, 30 minus 5 is 25. Again, this does not come directly from the conversions. Only the changes come directly from the conversions. How about this number? Make sense? 55? Because 55 minus 15 is 40. And how about this? 